Hi, this is Glenn, your travel photography guru. Have you ever seen images like this, where there's one main colour and everything else is stripped back to black and white? I'm going to take you through a simple process in Lightroom to achieve this effect. Let's start with the original photograph. I've gone back to the archives for this one, back to February 2006, and the photo features Webb Bridge in Melbourne, so it's a bridge that spans the Yarra River. And one thing you'll notice is it looks pretty yucky, but that's because we've just seen the finished product. I guarantee that if you'd seen that image on its own, you'd likely be thinking it was pretty good. It's amazing how the, the brain adapts and the wash of colour we're seeing over this, that yellow-orange which is coming from the incandescent lights surrounding the bridge, our brain will adapt for that. It's kind of a built-in white balance. But clearly it needs to be cleaned up to bring out the more vibrant red in the foreground structure. So anyway, I'm in Lightroom in the basic menu over here on the right-hand side. So we're actually in Develop and uh, the basic menu. Saturation's right down the bottom of the basic menu. So what's saturation? Well... If I take saturation all the way to the left, we've removed saturation from the image, which makes the photo effectively black and white. Now, it's actually not the best way to make a black and white photo, but it is a good way to uh, illustrate saturation. So if we, do, if we were to just to take out a small amount of saturation, you actually make the colours in that photograph move more towards pastel or pastel. If we were to increase the saturation, then we're getting more vibrant colours. And then right up the top, we're getting a, well, really fluorescent colour. So saturation is actually a measure of the purity of the colour. Reducing the saturation will give you more pastel results. Increasing the saturation will make the colours in the photograph more vivid, more vibrant. Okay, well, the trouble here, though, is that by taking all the saturation out, there's no colour left in the photograph at all. So what we want to do is actually to retain the red in that foreground structure and remove the colour from the rest of the image. So here's the trick. We get out of the basic menu, click on HSL, we get into the individual components, if you like, of colour the hue, the saturation and the luminance. So we're dealing today with the saturation. And the difference here is that you can um, alter the saturation of individual colours within a photograph. So these are all the colours possible to us within Lightroom. So I'm going to take out all the colour and you might be able to see that as I move my slider to the left, um, it's taking the orange out. I'll do the same for yellow, green, aqua, which used to be called cyan, blue, purple and magenta and we just have that one remaining color red in this photograph now you might notice that over here on the the right there's still a little bit of red because that light source way back there in a, a distant building is emitting some red so that's something you would have to spot out basically to retouch out but just for now that's what we do okay so now let's go back to our basic menu up the top and if we want a little bit more kick in our colours, we could increase the saturation. There we go. And look at that, the red really popped. So we started here with a pretty yellow-orange result. And you can see how that yellow-orange is eking into the reds and really mask the vibrancy of that colour in the red foreground structure. And that's where we ended up. So it's a much cleaner result. Now, with a little bit of extra work, we can end up here. All in Lightroom, so they were just some extra adjustments to clarity, a few other areas in the picture. And then for those who have the option, you know, a little bit of expertise, you could go into a program like Photoshop, take it to there. So in Photoshop, what I've done here is I've really brought out the textual qualities of the photograph and increased the, uh, the contrast. So we've come a long way from our starting point, which was here, and with a little bit of work in Lightroom, we can get that result, which I think most people would be very happy with. And for those who are interested, taking it into Photoshop for a little bit more bling. Wow, it's come a long, long way. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm Glenn, your travel photography guru. And I look forward to sharing some more Lightroom tips and techniques into the future. Thanks so much and bye for now.